Hi, welcome to Take It to the Table. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm Francis. And today we're going to talk through the setup and brief rules overview mm -hmm. for the Great Wall. Yes, and we will be setting up for the Black Powder expansion. We will be playing co-op for two players, so keep that in mind as we go through. We'll try to point out some uh, rules differences and things mm -hmm. like that. And this is going to be a pretty down and dirty um, setup. We're not yeah. going to slow pace this. It'll yeah. be really, this is just how we set up the game. Right. Um, because we've taken it down and set it up so many times now yeah. <laughs> that we're pretty much um, pretty comfortable with, with I think, uh, how we do it. So, um, yeah. But it should at least give you a, a good indication on how you should approach setting up this game because yes. it is sort of a bear to set up. There's yep. a lot going on, especially when you start bringing in the expansions. For sure. But um, So let's we'll start at the bottom of the board. Okay. We'll work our way up and then we'll give you a brief overview of how the rounds and the turns work. Um, and then, you know, Take it from there. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so let's start um, with a very important part, which is mm -hmm. placing our honor tokens. Okay. So even though we're playing cooperatively, we are both going to start on the zero point on the honor point track. We'll be able to spend our, our honor points basically as, as a resource. And I think even more importantly, before we go mm -hmm. on from there, this is the three player side of the board. Ah, yeah. um, the other side is for four or five players. Mm -hmm. So you definitely, if you're playing with two or three, you definitely need to be on this side. Right. Now, um, why and it'll it, tell you right there. Why is it set up for three, you may ask? Right. Well, we're going to be using this clan called the Reed Clan. The Reed Clan. And I think you have their card there, right? So we each have a card that um, explains to us what the Reed Clan is going to do. Really, it's going to, you know, they're going to be taking up space, supporting mm -hmm. our moves. And the first thing we're going to do is actually put out their clerks, one of each, or one clerk in each of these uh, production spots. So we have our... Uh, like lumber mill, we're going to get wood, we have our stone quarry, we have our gold mine. Right. Uh, the last spot is the uh, temple where mm -hmm. you can earn chi. So those are the main resources. So you're going to have a resource supply that you're going to want to build right away. These are the upgraded supply tokens right. in case you're wondering. Yeah. Uh, but your your blue crystals are your chi, you've got your gold blocks, which are cool looking, uh, your little logs for wood, you've got your stone, and you've got these wound tokens which we'll explain a little bit later as well. But Perfect. just create that supply put it off on the side, and these are locations where you're going to earn right. that, right? Um, now, we've kind of alluded to the fact that these clerks are out. These mm -hmm. are pretty much going to be our workers for our worker placement. Yep. We have a total of eight of those to use throughout the game. Only five are available to us at the start of the game. The other three are going to go down here in this location where we'll be able to uh, bring them out uh, as an action. You can recruit them. Yeah. Yep. So for we'll just cost. leave them there for their two gold each. Yes. <laughs> All right, so next, um, bring out the yeah, tactics cards. so we'll bring cards. out our, our tactics cards. Here. Now, when setting this game up, every deck of cards, um, you have your base set of cards, and then for whatever expansion you use, you're going to be adding those cards. They'll have a symbol on them. So mm -hmm. for this playthrough, we're going to be doing the, uh, at least for the setup, we're going to be doing the black powder. So those are the only other cards we've added right. through, through the tactics to the advisors, and you'll see those in a second. So you want to go ahead and, uh, we'll, we'll hit them we'll in a bit. We'll for that. And we'll, uh, we'll just keep moving up the board, yep. right? So there's other action spots, and we'll talk about them in a minute. Um, right here on the board is where the, is like the wall section, right? And mm -hmm. there's three columns of walls, the left, the center, and the right. Now for a two-player game, this far left section of the wall is closed. And this will always be the case, whether you're playing two-player competitive, two-player co-op, or regardless of whether you're playing with any expansions. Yep. This will always be the case. Always be the case. You're always closing off this. So you just take three of these barricades and block that off so that you know not to put any horde cards in these locations. Exactly. Um, we're only going to be using the center and the right. So with the normal setup, you would be placing three barricades in each of these spots, and that's all you would have. You wouldn't have walls. However, with the setup for the black powder, we're going to need to place walls instead. So we are starting with level one walls because... And no barricades. And no barricades <laughs> because there are siege engines in this and all sorts of really destructive things, which is really cool, but this is just the way you have to set it up. Um, next, we're going to populate... We can go with the horde cards. Yeah. So you're going to build the horde card deck like any other deck in the game. Mm -hmm. And this will have the, the base set. It will have the cooperative cards in it. And it will also have the black powder cards in it. So we've got a nice, pretty heavy supply of, of horde, horde cards. What you're going to notice, though, is on this deck of horde cards, on the back, you're going to show the three lanes for the, for the hordes to come in. And you'll have a horde card symbol that will vary between the center and the right lanes, but we're missing the left lane. 
Now, that is because I had taken them out ahead of time, knowing that we're not going to be placing any horde cards in the left lane. Correct. So what we're going to do in the standard setup is you bring out one horde card per empty lane. So we're going to bring out, you turn them face up. So we're going to bring one out here, mm -hmm. and you're going to bring one out here. And then we're going to bring plus one more, plus one, because it is a cooperative game. You look on the back of the next card, it shows the center lane. We're going to bring that into the center. So now we've set up the horde. There's a nice place on the board to keep that deck. This is the round tracker. Keep it on plus one so that you know that during this game, we're going to bring plus one horde card out mm -hmm. every time we bring out the horde. Cool. So that part is done. Also, for the black powder setup. This is the cool stuff. Yeah, so we're bringing out <laughs> these towers. These aren't part of the standard game, only for black powder. And because they look so awesome, we had to play Black Powder. Of course, even though we're probably going to get slaughtered. We will get slaughtered, <laughs> it's okay. but it's all good. Uh, next, with regards to the Reed General, mm -hmm. you're going to have a Reed Clan command card. That you're going to be you're going to use in the command card uh, activation order track. So you can just leave that there for now. We can manipulate that later, but keep this card off to the side. With the Reed Clan, when you choose them, we've mm -hmm. obviously chosen the red player color. To represent this clan. Um, obviously you need one that's not being played. Uh, so you're going to get three clerks and that's all he'll ever have for the whole game. And you're going to take all of the spearmen for that uh, clan as well and you're going to build a supply off to the side because they will only ever be attacking with spearmen. Right. Uh, you want to go over our troops? Yes, absolutely. So uh, each of us starts with, well we have I guess in our supply, right? Um, four archers. We have there's ten spearmen. Four, ten, yeah. ten spearmen, there we go. And we have two knights. Because we're playing with the Black Powder expansion, we also have a very specific type of extra a unique, troop. Unique, unique troop. Soldier. Yours are by and far way cooler the than coolest, mine. The coolest, yes. That's okay. <laughs> um, so the Snake Clan has this crossbowman yep. who... Has some cool and every clan has a we'll different type of special yeah. um, soldier for the Black Powder expansion. And we'll go over those right. rules, I think, once we start explaining Once we start explaining, game. yeah. Yeah. So you keep those off to the side. That's your supply. They're not on the board yet. Right. Um, so that is, for the most part, set up with a few more things. So in the cooperative game, we are going to have a supply, like any cooperative game, you're going to have something that really punishes you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way this game punishes you is through events, and they're all bad. <laughs> and you have an event deck, and they're going to come out every at the end of every year. And they're pretty much passive, and they stick around the whole, the whole game. So mm -hmm. you're going to have multiple of those up, just punishing you even more. Yeah. Uh, so aside from that, you're also going to have um, Emperor's Requests. So the Emperor's Requests are basically the goal for the two-player co-op game, or for the co-op game mm -hmm. in general. Just because um, in the standard game, you play till the time track runs out, you play until um, a couple of other uh, game things, end game-ending conditions, right. conditions, I think. If you build up the walls to their max, mm -hmm. you win. Um, so with co-op, the only way to win the game is to fulfill the Emperor's Requests. Right. Um, and you're going to bring one out for each player. So we're going to start with two every year, and um, hopefully we can fulfill those. If we fulfill six, yeah, we win. We win. <laughs> uh, sounds easy, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, let's also bring out the war machines. Yes. Because those are awesome. All right. So in the Black Powder expansion, we also have these three types of war machines. And the way these come out at the beginning of the game is one on each tower, or one on each, I'm sorry, wall space. Mm -hmm. Since we only have two wall spaces right now, we're actually going to bring two out on right. one wall space and one out on the last. And, and I'm you, actually you, looking. You will actually <laughs> um, alternate yeah. placing them. Right. I'm looking at where, what we actually might so need. So each player places yeah. one. I'm going to place this out here because I know we're going to need to be shooting at that right. Calvary. So. Yep. And I think each wall can only hold two. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you do have three supply. And you'll notice these red spots on the walls are spots for soldiers mm -hmm. or Archers. war machines. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously spearmen's on the tower. So, so those are the war machines. Now each war machine comes with a card. So you just want to keep those off to the side. It'll tell you what the cost of that war machine is to build and actually what it does. Because they all function a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But this is sort of our answer to 
what the hordes are yes. bringing in <laughs> with regards to siege engines. And they'll be bringing lots of siege engines. Yeah, so we're going to have a supply of siege engines off to the side where they've got battering rams, they've got trebuchets, and they've got ladders. So these things, beside aside from looking devastatingly awesome, they are uh, <laughs> they're pretty evil. They're pretty evil. They're going to come in at, at a later time uh, and just wreak havoc on our walls. Um, we're also going to have uh, a deck of rocket shot cards, which will give you um, a random scattering of where these things are going to hit uh, on the um, on the horde cards because you know rockets aren't guided. Mm -hmm. uh, they're Not more yet. Like, anyway. They're more like fireworks, <laughs> I would think, where they're just going out and blowing up. So uh, you never know what you're going to hit out there, uh, and it could be your own troops. Yeah. For all you know, right. which is not good. Um, and finally, you have these uh, a ballista shot card and a cannon shot card, which just tell you the, the spread of what the damage is for each of those weapons yeah, as they fire. Much more accurate. Yeah. Uh, finally, speaking of killing your troops and other people's troops, mm -hmm. we have uh, shame tokens. So we have a shame token pool. Shame um, is very critical in this game. We take out 10 of those for each player. So for us, we're going to start with 20 shame tokens. Mm -hmm. Seems like a lot, but as we start to accrue those, they're going to do bad things to us. And um, yeah. That's good. Yeah, so you can just put them out on the board. If these shame tokens, uh, when things happen, like if they breach our, our walls, yeah. if they, they do certain things, we're going to earn shame. Right. And um, if we have to take shame and we don't have anywhere, if there's no more space to draw it from, we lose the game because yeah, you're just good. way too shameful <laughs> uh, to do anything. So that about sets up the board. Um, we could talk about the T-Track tokens. Yeah, actually, let's, let's talk about player setup, and yep. that'll take care of Until the T-Track, and it'll track. take care of the advisors. Oh, excellent. So um, we've each taken a, um, a different okay. general for our clan, and each general has its own abilities, mm -hmm. uh, and they also have their own starting uh, setup resources. Uh, and they're also their T-Track ranking. Right. So you quite simply just take the resources to start, and it tells you at the bottom. So you're going to, like in my case, I'll get three wood, six stone, three gold, four chi, and two tactics cards. So I would mm -hmm. start with two tactics cards. And these cards are going to let you do um, a series of different actions at certain points in the game. They're pretty self-explanatory once you have them. And, you, and as soon as it tells you... You, you, when you can play them, you just play them. And, mm -hmm. and it usually makes something you've done stronger. So those will go in your supply. Right. Um, the T ranking is going to tell you where you go on the T track order mm -hmm. um, based on where you stand against with other players. Right. Um, you want to go about the uh, advisor cards now? Yeah, absolutely. So we're also going to start the game with two advisors. And we will be choosing which one of those we want to make active and which one we want to make passive. And I'll explain how that works right here. So. If you notice, you can keep these advisor cards face up and they've got nice pictures and, and effects that will help boost your, your general. If you flip it over, it's got a little scroll on the side on the corner. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use one of these as an active advisor. The other one is gonna be passive. We'll tuck it underneath our general card and that's going to boost our general's ability. If you notice and read the ability text, uh, most often they refer to the number of scrolls mm -hmm. that you have and that's where we'll get that boosted ability. Right. So again, you have to choose one to stay up and be your active advisor and one yeah. to stay down, which is more like a support. Um, you'll also, for each player clan, you're gonna get your six card starting command cards deck, and you'll be playing these command cards throughout the game. We all have the same ones mm -hmm. um, that you'll be selecting in secrecy. And for the expansion, we're also gonna have uh, a card that explains what your special troop does. Right. So like, for example, I'm the monkey clan and my special troop is called the monk. Mm -hmm. And it tells you their, yes, <laughs> you, you get, it tells you their cost and what ability that, that particular uh, soldier has that is different than the others. Excellent, yeah. And like I said, I have the snake clan and I have a crossbowman. Mm -hmm. And I'll get into the ability once we start actually playing the game. Yep. Finally, I'll put these advisors out. Now that we've chosen our advisors, this is a good time to put the remaining advisors out. So we have this uh, advisor supply here, or the advisor track. And these advisors will be available for us to hire throughout the game when we take um, uh, this particular action. So that will be there. And I think that about covers everything. I think that's it. That yeah. looks like, and it's quite a bit. It I is mean, a if lot. If you think yeah. about it, but that is that is the setup. Mm -hmm. um, 
And at this point, we'd be ready to just I kick off and start the game. To get into it, yeah. So what we'll do now is we'll go over the uh, turn structure, mm -hmm. the round structure, uh, very briefly, and then we'll we'll call it. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Okay, so now for the most complicated part of this. Yes. <laughs> it would be the flow of the game. Yes. Um, each round represents a year. Each year represents four different seasons. Correct. And each season has a number of different steps. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of the game, we start in the fall. And the fall is really the command card um, phase, phase where, you, where you activate your command card. So what's going to happen is every player is going to um, choose a command card in secret. Mm -hmm. um, and they will reveal them at the same time. And in the cooperative game, in, in the standard game, you would place them in, you would determine who goes in what order based on your T-track. Correct. Right? Yeah. So if you're top of the T-track, which we have here, and then like we said, it was based on your T-ranking. Yes, yeah, so so I'm since, actually a 45. So you're 45, you'd be on top, I would be, I'm 20, so I'd be second, and then the Reed Clan is always last. Mm -hmm. And you can adjust this throughout the game by taking this action, which we'll go through in a second. But we would play these cards, and then in a cooperative game, we collectively decide what order we want to play in. Because you remember, the Reed Clan is also going to go. Mm -hmm. So um, which one activates first, and then you would just go down the line. Right. In the fall, we choose the command cards, um, and then we actually will activate and process each command card in order. And each command card is going to have um, what you get to do, what other players get to do, mm -hmm. and then what you get to do. Yeah. Um, and they're all slightly different, mm -hmm. but uh, for the most part, they let you move and deploy. And they do build off of each other. So depending on which cards you're playing and what other cards are being played, you may actually end up with enhanced actions mm -hmm. and whatnot. So uh, very interesting. It is very it. interesting. So during that command step, so you're going to do your commands, and you're going to basically move your... A lot of them just let you move up to five of your guys out, or all of your mm -hmm. guys out on the board. Yeah. Two, anywhere where like two to five guys. Right. Um, and you're going to just take any of these action spots. And, and what these action spots are, they basically represent two different things. You've mm -hmm. got these special actions. Which are the green circles. The green ones, which can hold up to any number of clerks. Mm -hmm. Then you've got these regular actions, which are red. right? And you'll notice they have a couple different spots here. The way this works is every round, we're going to go through the cards. We're going to place all our workers. And then every green spot is going to activate mm -hmm. regardless of how many workers or how many clerks are there. Every red spot, these these uh, red, these uh, standard ones, mm -hmm. are only going to activate if there's enough clerks to fill the entire spot. The entire spot. Um, if that's the case, then you're going to. So in this example on the gold mine, you're going to get one gold per clerk. Mm -hmm. So I, blue would get three, uh, yellow would get one, mm -hmm. and in the Reed General's case, yeah. they would get one as well. But all of their all of their resources go to the warehouse, which we could talk about right. in a second. But that's how that would work. And then you would take your workers back. Now, there is um, an, uh, an advanced activation, mm -hmm. which does come up from time to time, that allows you to take the activation on a space that's not completely full. Mm -hmm. But we'll explain that as we play the game. Yeah, as we as you'll see that in the playthrough. Yeah. Um, when the green ones activate, you just take the action. Now, you'll see that there's these flags. That mm -hmm. represents shame. Right. If you are the only clan on this location and it triggers, you get shame. Right. Because you, you should you're be doing that. You're not. You're not, you're not being a team player. <laughs> yeah. um, these are really hard to get shame because you'd have to put, like, every one of your dudes out right, there. Right, right. But, but it can happen. It can happen. Yeah. It can happen. But typically, you're going to be able to man manipulate where the read general right. goes because it allows you to move them. And, um, and you really kind of have to set these combos up. Um, we can go over the spaces real quick. Yeah, I can go over them. Yeah, so yeah. again, as I kind of alluded to before, we have a couple of resource production buildings down here. This is like our lumber mill, our stone quarry, and our gold mine. And each of these locations, obviously, will give you that number of resources like we just mentioned. We have the temple here. The temple produces chi. And underneath here, we have some spots uh, that incrementally increase in value. And what that does is allow us to put an overseer out on the board. Mm -hmm. And all you need to know right now is that if we pay the resources at the time we get the indicated resource in that spot, we can place out one of our uh, miniatures 
and troops, yeah. one of our troops and, and basically they're just going to be there to be an overseer and every time we go to that location in the future we'll actually get an additional one two or three resources of that type mm -hmm. we can also upgrade that overseer by spending the indicated resources in between those two uh, upgrade spots yep and you can upgrade every time you generate or produce that resource mm -hmm. And, the, and it activates, you have the option to, to upgrade them one time. Right. <laughs> um, if you don't have one there, the first one counts as an upgrade, even right. though you're deploying them for the yeah, first time. <laughs> and then every year, as you'll see when we get to it, you, uh, in the beginning of the summer, those overseers will generate income depending on what level they're at. Right. right? And the, the top level will earn you three. Mm -hmm. So you, that's just an additional way to earn resources and, and really leverage those spots. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you continue on. Okay, excellent. So um, over here we have um, our location where you can, again, recruit your advisors. The way the advisor recruitment works from a pay standpoint is you're going to pay gold mm. to the number of advisors you will have once you hire the advisor you want to hire. So since we start the game with two advisors, one active and one passive, the very next one that we want to hire, the third one, is actually going to cost three gold. Yep. The one after that will cost four, etc. We can also uh, recruit one of our um, clerks from this spot for two gold. We have our tactics location here, so you can come here. This is like our war academy, mm -hmm. right? So we can draw tactics cards that will help us. And we didn't really talk about what these tactics cards are. You'll see them come up when we play the game. Yep. But they're just going to like boost our abilities and give us they're, <laughs> a they're lot good. of benefits they're that really we need good. in order to win this thing. Mm -hmm. So um, Down here, we have the builder's encampment, where we'll be able to build wall sections. And in the black powder expansion, we'll also be able to build our war machines. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can build barricades as well. They're a little less expensive. We have our warehouse here, which again, uh, our read clerk will be dropping his resources, but we will also be able to donate one of any resource that we receive from these production buildings to the warehouse. Right. And that's also indicated in case you forget by these little arrows. If we do that, we also get two honor points. Mm -hmm. So we are still trying to get honor points in this game. We can spend them to get rid of shame tokens and we'll uh, explain that if it comes up. Over here, we have our logistics center, so we can actually move our troops from wall section to wall section or from the rest station, or the rest area down here up to the walls. Uh, again, just logistics, it helps mm -hmm. us move people around a little bit. And then as Anthony mentioned, we have our T-track here. This location is where we're going to be recruiting our troops and the uh, amount that we have to pay for our spearmen, for our archers, and for our knights is listed here. The cost for our special troops is on our card, and we would take um, this action to recruit our troops as well. Mm -hmm. I think that covers this Yeah, side. so those are all the right. actions that you take with the clerks every right. now, right? Um, then you move the tea room, right? Yeah, so the way that the... the way, basically, you're just going to go here, and you can manipulate the uh, tea order. Right. And again, in a, in a cooperative game, it seems like it shouldn't matter. It does matter in some cases when we're breaking ties. Very, but, but it doesn't really matter. seldom does it really you're, you're, matter. At least have we encountered that. No, because you're collectively trying to beat the horde. So you're not really right. out to, to outdo yeah. each other. You just want to win, right? Because yep. we're going to win together or we're going to lose together. Yeah. I will say it, it does come into play like if you're picking your advisors um, things like that that you want to do like one at a time but again in a co-op game you're, yeah, you're, you're not about yeah you're so going to say don't take other. that one because i need yeah. them and right. if you do you're really just hurting the team yeah. at the end of the day so um so i rarely have to pull rank with the t card <laughs> track on her right okay um, because she's usually cooperative uh so as you said you've got you've got your events they're going to come out um later on but so that was the the, the that was the fall the fall is the most complex round because yeah. it, it really takes the most time because you're doing your worker placement and you're going to activate it three times this right. game for each player so you can you can really activate those spots three Many separate times, times. Yeah. yeah it's got just there's a lot of actions that are going to take place so once the fall's done you're going to at the end of every uh fall you're gonna because you're going to be deploying troops you're going to be attacking these cards and every time you attack these cards you're either going to place a troop on them so like for example if you recruit when you recruit a troop they immediately can go into what they call the rest area for deployment later, or they can go right out to any spot on a card, if the card allows for it, because there's text on these cards where there's certain limitations we could talk about in a second. But once you cover up a spot, you know, that troop is deployed and it's actively attacking. So you, um, 
you have to um, evaluate this at the end of the season. So at the end of the fall, you're going to check to see which horde cards have all of these symbols, these spots covered, because then they're they're defeated, right. and you can get your rewards. And from we're them. actually going to check for horde defeat at the end of each turn. I'm sorry. Yes, at yeah. the end of each turn, not at the end of the season. So yeah. at the end, because each turn you're going to potentially defeat these. <laughs> Hopefully, because at the end of the at the beginning of the the winter, we're going to be checking to yep. see if these things are going to be breaking through our wall. <laughs> well, you do get another. So so that's the fall, right? So you're going to do all your actions. You're going to try to defeat these horde cards, and then the winter starts, and you're going to have what's called a firing phase. Mm -hmm. All of your mounted archers and uh, ranged items are going to fire. So you get to allocate them to your wall section. Mm -hmm. So those hordes are going to take more damage. So you could end up defeating a lot of them during that firing phase. So everybody sure. gets a shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you check for defeat again. And then the hordes are going to assault. So you're going to add up the horde value, and you're going to compare it against the wall value. So these walls, first level walls, are eight, where this trebuchet here is six. So this wouldn't be able to um, to defeat the eight wall. But if you look here, this horde card can only be placed in the third row. So this would actually only come out here because it's mm -hmm. a trebuchet. And, uh, and can never move closer to the wall. So it's a ranged item. And this is specific to the black powder. And after the assault phase, destroy one level wall. <laughs> so that's something you want to get rid of right away. Fast. <laughs> yeah. And the reason it's it's challenging that it's out there is because each troop can only do a certain thing. So your spearmen can only fight cards in the first row. Right. Because they can't go out that far. Knights, however, can go out here and hit them. And an archer on the wall mm -hmm. can shoot out here, which you would identify with these rain, uh, these uh, wound symbols. Right. So that's how you would do that. Um, we're not going to go too much into the strategy here. we will here. explain this as we, again, as You'll we see play, this in the playthrough. So I just want to go through the, the thing. So that's the assault phase. So these guys would get an assault, see if they breach the walls. Um, we would do, then we would do a request fulfillment step at that point and make sure that we've achieved this, this request from the emperor, which um, in some cases are, are sacrificed troops. Sometimes they want resources mm -hmm. from the warehouse, uh, but we'll know at the beginning of the year to see what we have to do. Um, and then we would check to see if we completed the six for end game, not happening. Um, and then we would um, bring out new emperor's request cards and then we would do our event and we would reveal the next event, right? right? And so that would end the winter. And then we go into the spring where we would advance the time track. We would place our new horde cards. And remember, three more are going to come out. Right. And the first card's always going to go in the front slot. Mm -hmm. And then the next one's going to go where this one tells you. If you ever have to bring out a card and there's nowhere to put it, this card gets Indeed. discarded <laughs> and it's considered a raid. So they're going to actually raid you. Do bad uh, stuff. Do bad <laughs> stuff. We're going to take shame and all sorts of things are going to happen. So that's not good either. If their number is higher than the wall, the total wall defense value, they're going to breach the wall and a whole bunch of bad things are going to happen there as well. We're not going to go through yeah. that full explanation. We're just I'm giving sure you... I'm sure it'll happen as we play. Yeah, you'll see that during the playthrough. <laughs> but this is really about setup, right? right. So um, we place new hard cards. We're, we would advise, uh, refresh the advisor track mm -hmm. where the top two cards get burned. Next two slide up, two more come out. So that's the whole spring. Spring is pretty quick. Right. Summer is the same. In the beginning of the summer, the overseers that we talked about earlier are going to earn income, depending on their level. Um, we have the opportunity now to discard shame tokens. Mm -hmm. In the normal game, you can discard them um, different ways mm -hmm. in, the, in the standard game. But in this co-op game, we have to pay 10, 10 to one. honor yeah. to get rid of one shame token. Unless we have the passive event that makes it 20. <laughs> yeah, which, <laughs> which is, is brutal. <laughs> Um, all the discard, all the um, command cards from the last round would then get discarded, so they're not available to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would be able to reclaim any cards in the discard pile. And in this game, you um, you only in a co-op game you can only reclaim them once you defeat a horde card. If you're the one who actually contributed the most to that horde card defeat, can you reclaim one of those cards? Um, and then you're back to fall, and yeah. we go through the whole cycle again. And we're going to do this until, in a co-op game, we complete six of these Emperor's Requests, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Or time runs out. Or time runs out. Or we run out of honor and we lose, <laughs> or right? We, or we, no, we run out of shame. Or we have too much shame. Too much shame. Yeah, shame. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Too <laughs> we much shame. just walk, walk away with our heads down and just join the Mongols, I guess. And that's it. So <laughs> that is the setup and a brief overview of the round structure and the turn structure and what some things do. There's quite a bit more to it, mm -hmm. um, but that'll all come out in the playthrough video, which you'll see soon enough.
Yeah, I think that's that's a, a pretty good get you started overview. It should get you started at least. <laughs> that plus a little bit of help from the from the reference manual, and sure. I think you should be well on your way to, to getting this set up. So um, we hope this was helpful. Please leave uh, any questions in the notes, and we'll do our best to answer them. Yeah, and, we've uh, played this several several times. So yeah, and I think at, at this point, go check out the playthrough. All right.